Hey guys, the Handy Tech here. I recently dusted off my old PS3 and sort of got back into some gaming and I noticed my controllers were pretty bad so I bought this aftermarket Afterglow controller to replace it. The controller runs off AA batteries and I've already had to replace them a couple of times. They really don't last that long so I figured what I could do is upgrade to a rechargeable lithium cell and I thought I'd show you how I did that. This is the battery I chose. It's 1000 mAh at 3.7 volts and it cost me about 5 bucks. I'll be using the battery in conjunction with this little charge module based on the TP4056 and that one I got 10 for about 5 bucks so it cost me about 50 cents. First off I just wanted to make sure that the lithium battery that I ordered was going to fit inside the compartment and I did check the dimensions on eBay before I ordered them but yeah just wanted to make sure it was going to fit and it looks like there's plenty of space which is good. Alright let's get this thing open. So you've got to use a Phillips head screwdriver to take out the screws in these locations. The last two screws are in behind the label I just punched through with the screwdriver to take the screws out. You could probably try to take off the label if you wanted, but yeah, the controller is only $30 or something, so it's not a big deal. Then just gently pry and the back piece should come away. Then you've got to take out the first PCB and you just take out four screws and then you can gently prise the board out of the controller. Then if you take out another four screws you can remove the main PCB. We're going to remove the battery terminals for the old AA type batteries. So first I took out this plastic cover and now we're going to have to desolder the battery terminals. There were two solder pads for each battery terminal and I used some little links to solder those pads together and here you can see on the board labelled plus and minus. With the terminals removed I can put the PCB back in and screw it back down and then I can solder on some red and black cable that will connect to the battery. Then I can screw the second PCB back in and I just took my time and made sure it lined up really nice and same with the vibrating motors just you can see on the phone they've got depressions where they sat so I just put them in exactly the same spot. Now I can sort of pry off the other side of the battery terminal and that just sort of comes out and then carefully feed the positive and negative cabling through the hole that the terminals used to go through and screw the two sides back together. I had the camera set up pretty shit here but basically I just put a bit of masking on the battery cover and then marked where I wanted to make a hole for the mini USB connected to poke through. Then I used a couple of different bits on my Dremel to grind out a hole and I just kept sort of test fitting the board until I was satisfied with the way it fit. Then I used some masking tape to hold that board in place with the cable in so I knew it was going to fit. Then hot glued it in place. Now I figured this should probably have some sort of voltage regulation so I used a 3.3 volt regulator and this is to stop the charge module which puts about 4.2 volts on the battery from sending that same voltage through to the controller PCB. So I came up with this sort of Frankenstein looking circuit that I sealed in and here's a schematic of that voltage regulator setup if you want to make one at home yourself. So yeah like I said I just used some hot glue to glue that little circuit in and then I could sort of press the battery in place and glue the battery in as well. 
the 33 microfarad cap that was sticking out by the battery, I ended up removing from the cabling and actually soldering it on the main PCB. Then I put on two bits of heat shrink, stripped down the black and red wires and tinned them. And then you can't actually really see because my hands are in the way, but I'm just soldering the two reds and the two blacks together. I had to make one last little adjustment to these little plastic bits here. But then we can install the battery and it clicks together nice, it fits really well and yeah, it's great. And you can see when you plug it in that it's charging and the little LED on that TP4056 board comes up red. And you can also see the current draw with that little USB measuring device. And if you wait long enough, the current draw goes all the way down to nothing and the green LED light comes on. And that was the finished product. So pretty happy for the cost of, you know, less than 10 bucks. I've made it rechargeable and now I don't have to pay for batteries anymore. Hopefully this helped you guys out. You could probably use this for heaps of other AA battery powered devices. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. That'd be awesome.